What's going on guys, welcome to Sonic Sounds and today we are going to talk about mixing a beat in Logic Pro X and we're going to mainly use the stock EQ to make the sound really pop out and cut through. So I made this beat in FL Studio, exported the stems and now they are in Logic Pro X. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick EQ correction. We're going to bust all the drum channels, all the melodic channels, all the bass and all the other elements. And we're going to make sure they sit in tandem with each other and you have a good product to show someone when you show them the beat. So let's jump into Logic Pro, go grab a cup of coffee and let's mix this. So this is pretty much the instrumental that I have. I have about 21 tracks, including the bass, kick, all the different elements. Now, the one thing we don't have here is all the tracks named. So give me a second. I'm going to go and rename all the tracks and then we'll group them together and we'll do a basic mix using EQ on these guys. All right. So now we have everything renamed. You can see that everything's easy to see. So what we're going to quickly do is just rearrange it and make sure all the drums and all the melodic instruments are next to each other. So I'm going to put all the effects at the bottom. I'm going to make sure all the drums are at the same place. I'm going to put my 808 actually all the way at the top. So my vocal chops here, another effects, bring it down, guitar, melodic, chords. So these are all my drum tracks. So what I'm going to do is command shift and G and I'm going to group that into a drum track. So, and let's take the 808 out of that. That's gonna stay as its own. Then let's take all the melodic instruments and what we're gonna do is we are gonna make another group for them. Now this technique is really good because you're not treating each individual sound. As far as you have selected good samples or you're using a good source like Splice, you're already gonna have sounds that are, are EQ'd and they're gonna sit well in the mix. Let's play the beat real quick. So now that we have named all the tracks and we grouped them, what we're going to do is we're just going to add open our mixer and we're going to go to these different buses and we're just going to minimize everything and just add an EQ onto all these different elements. All right. So now that we have everything in a group, what we're going to do is hit X and open up and we're going to open up EQ on each channels. Now, one of the first thing that you're going to want to fix is how your drums sound. So let's listen to our drums by themselves. Now I know between 60 to 80 or probably 40 to 80 is where I'm going to want my 808s to come in. So I'm just going to drag this, make this a little less and just make a slight cut between 40 to 80 right here so that my 808 can shine through. And let's open up the EQ on our 808. Now that's making the 808 and the drum or bass pretty much the kicks it together. So let's see what difference that bump and the cut on the drums and 808 made. So you can already hear the kick drum cutting through better. Now what we're going to do is let's listen to the melodic instruments with the drums as well and open up the EQ. So this is melodic instruments and this is the drum EQ. So what I did here is I wanted some high end in here in the melodic instruments because it was really lacking there. I wanted to cut the mud out and also I didn't want anything under 100 because that space is really taken up by my 808 and also my drum. So let's look at it, it visually and let's also see the cuts that we made. All right, so now let's do one thing. Let's bypass this EQ and see what exactly we did and what difference that made. Yep. 
you can already hear that things are cutting through much nicer. Now, one thing I also want to do is on this melodic instruments, I want the high end to shine even more on the stereo field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another EQ right here. And now what we're going to do is we are going to put this on the sides only and we are going to cut the lows from the sides. So now this is only impacting the signal on the side and we are pushing up the high end on the sides. So let's listen to just the melodic instruments with this EQ. Without. All right, and now one thing I also want to do is I want to add another EQ to my 808 as well. And I want to make sure anything that's under 150 is playing in mono. So I am just going to go to sides only. And I am also going to do the same thing where the sides are not playing anything that's pretty much under 200. So let's listen to that. Without. with now this is pretty much carving its own spot for each instrument be it in the center field or the side field now one thing i'm noticing this 808 has inconsistent sound so what we're going to do is we're going to add a compressor on it and that has more consistent sound now one thing we also want to do is we want to take the kick and we're going to side chain the kick to the 808. We're going to go to kick 1, send it to bus 4 and we're also going to go to kick 4, kick 2 and send it to bus 4. We'll hit control and click so the volume's at 100%, name the bus side chain and make sure the volume is not going anywhere. So now both of these signals are being sent to the side chain. But you're not going to hear it when we play it. But what we're going to do is go to our 808 and we're going to open it and we're going to tell the side chain to go to bus forward. Two kicks are coming in and hit side chain. So now every time these kicks are going to come in, the 808 is going to duck a little bit. So let's listen to that. And let's do no side chain. You don't hear that pumping, thumping effect, but as soon as we tell the compressor to take this kick and duck the 808 you get this effect all right let's play this together and see what it sounds like Now another thing you can do is a lot of these melodic elements and the chords that I have, you can pan them a little bit to get a bit of stereo width so I know I have these two melodic elements. Before they were in the center like this and there really wasn't any width so if you just widen it out a little bit, this is what it sounds like. Again, these pads are something that are not cutting through, so let's listen to this. I don't want the low end. All right, let's see if that cuts through the mix now. Again, another melodic instrument right here. Let's go to EQ and actually bump this up on the side. So we're going to go to sides again and we're going to bump like the 68k frequency up a little bit on the sides. All right, let's listen to this. And again, EQ is one of your best friends. It's one of the first tools you want to go to, whether it's boosting or cutting. And again, let's also do this again. Now that we have all these EQs, we're just going to bypass it. And then we're going to enable it again to see what it sounds like.
So that's how I use EQ in mixing my instrumentals. Again, this is a very, very basic EQ tutorial. There are different types of EQs where you can do notches and bump certain very tiny frequencies up and down, but this is pretty much the first step of cutting frequencies you don't want, boosting the things that you want and making it sound good. Again, go by your ear and not the gear or how it visually looks. I'm using the stock EQ and it's doing a phenomenal job. It has all the tools of mids, sides, centers, and you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. Get a basic taste out of it, then compress and add any kind of effects you want to it. And then do your mastering to it and you have a beat that's ready to be presented. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. We're on our way to 5,000 subscribers. At 5,000 subscribers, I am giving away microphones, so make sure you subscribe to it. And as usual, keep making great music. I'll see you at the next one.